Welcome to the Data Scientist Podcast with Dr. Stylianos Kabakis. Dr. Kabakis is a data scientist, statistician, and blockchain expert with a mission to educate the public about the wonderful capabilities of technologies like AI, data science, and DLTs. These technologies have the potential to transform the world, the economy, and our lives. However, there is too much misinformation around tech, and so most people are just confused about what is true and what is not. Whether you are a CEO, an entrepreneur, or just an enthusiast, the Data Scientist Podcast helps you separate reality from hype. Hi, everyone. In this episode, I'm going to talk about a very, very interesting topic. I was reading an article recently on MIT Technology Review, which is called An AI can simulate an economy millions of times to create a fairer tax policy. So as some of you might know, I'm a big fan of complexity theory and computational economics and related fields, and had done some work in this area. For example, a couple of years ago, I was researching the applications of agent-based modeling in token economies. And I really believe that These tools, these methods from complexity science, from AI, can help us understand social systems better. They can help us understand economics better. And there was a point in time when complexity science and agent-based simulations, etc., were very popular. And then, unfortunately, they fell out of favor. I really believe that in the long run, these approaches are going to dominate because they're the only methods we have that can really model the full complexity of social systems, economies included. So what this article talks about, it discusses some research that was conducted by Salesforce, the CRM company. And the researchers in in Salesforce, they created an artificial economy that was based on reinforcement learning. So this economy, it has agents, and the agents, they can interact with each other in the market. And the agents, they operate based on reinforcement learning and they have different skills and they can take actions and accumulate wealth, etc. And this creates, let's say, simulation of a real society where agents, some agents might be wealthy, some agents might be poor, etc. And the agents discover new strategies to exploit the market, to make the most of it. At the same time, there is an AI policymaker and the policymaker tries to maximize productivity while minimizing inequality. So what the policymaker is doing is it tries to come up with taxation schemes in order to achieve this dual objective. Yeah, maximize productivity and profit while while at the same time minimizing inequality. And a few very interesting things came out of the system. First of all, the system is dynamic. So it looks like the agents would adapt to the incentives provided by the policymaker. So, for example, some wealthy agents might reduce their productivity in order to go to a lower tax band and then increase it again in order to game the system. At the same time, the policymaker might come up with some counterintuitive strategies which work really well in practice. For example, one of the policies that reinforcement learning government came up with was to apply high taxes to the rich and the poor while applying low taxes to the middle class. And this was proven to increase productivity while reducing inequality. And it might sound somewhat counterintuitive, but I find this fascinating because we have witnessed similar things in the past from like in other situations where an AI achieved superhuman performance. So for example, AlphaGo, the AI system that basically beats the game of Go, When it was playing against some grandmasters of Go, the grandmaster said that some of the moves that the AI was making, they didn't seem to make sense at first glance. So they were very counterintuitive. It was not a move that a human would make. And eventually they realized that these moves were very, very smart because the AI won. And the same with Alpha Chess, like the Alpha Go variant which can play chess. And I remember reading some time ago that the official chess games There are some chess players that unfortunately cheat by, you know, using apps to advise them on the moves. Maybe someone goes to the bathroom and, you know, they have access to an app and they ask, you know, the AI, okay, so what move should I do? And I was reading that one of the, let's say, checks that the referees have in those games 
is to see whether some of the moves that the human is performing are very counterintuitive. Like if, if they see someone doing really like an orthodox moves, they assume that this person must be advised by an AI. And I find this fascinating that we're talking about games or social systems and, you know, social systems like the economy, they obviously include the game component. You know, you can model parts of it using game theory. And AI can come up with strategies, with techniques to outperform what humans are currently doing, even if these techniques look counterintuitive. And so I, I believe that, you know, for all of us who believe that AI can be a force for good, I believe that this research proves, provides further proof to the thesis that, yes, AI is going to revolutionize many aspects of our lives and society, and it can do this in a good way. Now, is AI really going to be applied in this way? I mean, are we going to see governments in five or ten years use AI to come up with new policies to reduce inequality and improve taxation? I think eventually we will, but obviously this is going to take time, right? So there's a skepticism around some parts of the world, around AI and how it's going to be used. And we're talking about a complicated piece of technology, which unfortunately many people do not understand. So I think it's going to take some time for the government to catch up to this. Plus, politics is a weird game, right? So maybe there are agents in politics that don't really want this to happen, don't really want to maybe make optimal tax policies because they want to offer tax breaks to some of their friends, something like that. But in any case, I believe that in the next 10 or 20 years, some countries will start using this technology in order to create policies. And once everyone sees how effective they are, then they will mimic them. And again, this research, you know, it's one hand new because it uses reinforcement learning. But on the other hand, computational economics have been around for a very long time, for around 30 years or so. So I believe that as we progress, as our technology becomes more computerized and AI improves, we'll see AI being applied to more and more areas, more areas of, you know, for lives, of policy, of sciences, etc. And I believe that regarding economics, that we will soon reach a point where all these things will come together. So a couple of years ago with blockchain, we saw the creation of artificial economies. Now people are using Bitcoin they, you know, as a way to bypass government in some cases, which can be good or bad. But in any case, it looks like that technology is really pushing for some changes yeah, in the economy. And what I can say is that the future for all of us who are in this area, definitely looks very interesting and fascinating. I just hope that we will be able to make the most out of it, yeah, to make the most out of these methods and this technology. So I'd be very interested to, to hear your opinion. Economics, obviously, is one very hotly debated topic, as is politics. So if you have an opinion on the subject as to whether it's a good idea to use AI for policy making, please let me know. Feel free to get in touch through my website, thedatascientist.com. Thank you for being here with me today, and I hope to see you again soon. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Make sure to visit thedatascientist.com for more content about data science, AI, and blockchain.